本节目内主持人及嘉宾的言论纯属个人意见，并不代表本台立场。Welcome to the third and final segment of this episode of Boiling Point. I'm Ben, and Julian couldn't be here today. Um, I thought um, um, what I could do in this uh, last segment was um, basically read uh, an article that is um, that hasn't been published anywhere. Um, and uh, well, yeah. Um, it co it's about the 20th anniversary of the handover, um, and um, it was uh, it was supposed to be a, a time marking uh, article, a journalistic length article, about a thousand words. Um, there were some some organisations were trying to to uh, mark this um, this the, the the handover, the July one anniversary. Um, with uh, some scholarship or some journalistic um, writing. And um, there was, I'm aware of somebody who wrote, who was asked to, to contribute an article. And um, basically uh, they wrote the article and uh, they sent the article to the, um, to the organization. Um, and then, they, the, that, but that, the article never got published. Um, and the, the, the writer of the article uh, received uh, no explanation and um, was not contacted. Um, so, so there is an unpublished article and uh, I thought, well, um, maybe I could just read it and um, uh, use up the next uh, 10 minutes of uh, this segment. Okay. 20 years after the handover, Hong Kong is still the front line of China and the West's confrontation. That's basically the uh, headline. The main headline on the front page of the Mingpao newspaper on Saturday, June 17, caught my attention. It was a quote attributed to Feng Wei, the deputy director of China's Hong Kong and Macau affairs office. He said, Quote, Hong Kong is becoming the stage for an international wrestling match. Sorry, so um, I think, yeah, Hong Kong, the, the quote was attributed to Feng Wei and it was, Hong Kong is becoming an international wrestling match stage and the PLA's garrison's challenge is immense. That sounds more like a headline than a quote, but, oh, sorry, yes, the headline was a quote. Hong Kong is becoming the stage for an interna international wrestling match. The PLA's challenge is immense. Um, and Fung made that remark in a speech he gave the day before at a ceremony marking the 20th anniversary of the PLA's Hong Kong garrison. When I saw that headline, which was a, a quote, obviously an indirect quote, I knew uh, in my bones or in my gut that what Fung was referring to in a basically um, unveiled manner was the Cold War that China and the West are engaged in, in and over Hong Kong. Um, this is something that I've become acutely aware of um, in my, uh, while I've been doing research in Hong Kong. And um, 
However, you know, this is just what I would, this is what I felt in my bones, uh, in my, what my intuition was telling me. So what I did uh, is I, I asked a Hong Kong friend whether or not China and the US are in a contest in Hong Kong fighting each other in the courts and ideologically in the media. And the prize that they're fighting for uh, is the hearts and minds of Hong Kong people. And this person whom I asked this question, he looked at me like I was an idiot and said, of course. Okay, well, that's one person. Um, but, and then um, I went and got a second opinion. And this time, actually, I got an opinion from a scholar, a Hong Kong scholar. And he said the same thing, of course. Um, and he said, quote, Hong Kong is the focus of the East and West confrontation. It was the base for the West before the handover. Now it's China's base, unquote. He then added that Hong Kong politics must be understood in the global context of geopolitics. Um, there's, a, there's a Hong Kong businessman. His name is uh, Peter Wong Man Kong. He, um, he's in the um, tourism business nowadays, but he used to be in the um, shipbuilding or um, marine platform building business in Hong Kong. And uh, he once said, um, when the British left, the Americans came in. And this guy, uh, Mr. Peter Wong Man Kong, is actually a uh, Hong Kong delegate to, the, to China's National People's Congress. Uh, he told the author of this article that in an interview. Hong Kong people themselves know that Western powers and China, now as before, that is, now after the handover and before, before the handover, now as before, Western powers and China stalk each other here, fighting without guns in miniature, symbolically via proxies. Hong Kong people can feel it in their bones as they see and experience it in their everyday lives, even if it's invisible. They don't mention it, they don't mention this uh, Cold War because it goes without saying. They take it for granted. On the other hand, the international community has almost no idea of the conflict in, happening in Hong Kong that is essentially a clash of civilizations. And the reason the international community doesn't know is because the English language um, reportage on Hong Kong is sanitized, euphemistic, grossly oversimplified, and even disinformative. Someone said truth is the first casualty in war. Well, um, it's also the first casualty in um, the Cold War happening in Hong Kong, at least in the English language reportage. Deliberate non-reporting of events that evidence, that illustrate, that symbolize the international power struggle um, that's happening in Hong Kong keeps the global public in the dark. What Ming Pao, the newspaper that I referenced in the, uh, in the, at the beginning, what Ming Pao judged the most significant part of Feng's speech, the international wrestling match remark, was absent from the report on the speech carried by the pro-China English language newspaper, the South China Morning Post. 
the pro-West news website, Hong Kong Free Press, which is like an inversion of the South China Morning Post. By that, I mean it's like a pro-West website or pro-West news uh, website, did not report Feng's speech at all. Recent events that point to the escalation of the Cold War include the interception by Chinese jets of a US reconnaissance plane just 240 kilometers from Hong Kong in May. It was rare for the US to needle China with a spy plane so close to Hong Kong. It will be interesting to see if such practices increase in frequency in the future. On April 1, April Fool's Day of course, the US consulate posted a 15 second film clip on its Facebook page mocking Hong Kong newspaper reports um, in the pro-China papers about foreign powers. The headlines of the reports in the pro-China newspapers were, one, foreign forces ghostly shadow is everywhere, two, U.S. seizes every opportunity to create disorder in Hong Kong. And three, U.S. consulate must give Hong Kong people an explanation. And those headlines um, in that in that um, in that 15-second film clip um, were accompanied by a spooky techno music. Suggesting US intelligence agencies influence over the Apple Daily newspaper. And when I say US intelligence agencies, I mean the CIA, which you know, we can uh, say is part of the deep state, the globalist deep state. Um, suggesting US intelligence agencies influence over the Apple Daily newspaper in early June, after Trump announced the US would withdraw from the Paris Climate Accord, the whole front page of the paper the next day was devoted to castigating the move. US becomes, no, US first becomes US isolated was the sloganistic headline. And, and, that, and that sloganistic headline was um, what echoed the, um, the slogans of, of the protesters outside the White House after um, Trump withdrew from the, that Paris Accord. The whole world condemned that uh, pullout, um, the, the Apple Daily newspaper said on its front page. With, um, with the, and let me go on. With the current US intelligence apparatus seen as being behind the anti-Trump campaign in the Western media, Apple Daily's proximity to the CIA was confirmed. In contrast to how the Apple Daily reported uh, Trump's pullout of the Paris Climate Accord, the Ming Pao newspaper, um, in a much smaller report, in the middle of the newspaper, in its international news section, reported it. So I think it's very interesting to actually note how Apple Daily reported um, this uh, event and how Ming Pao reported the event. Uh, Apple Daily put it on its front page, big headline, sloganistic headline, while in Ming Pao it was in the, it was in the international news section, which you'd think makes sense for a Hong Kong newspaper. But Apple Daily putting it on its front page, you'd think, wow, it's like a US newspaper. Um, similarly, in February, some high-profile pro-West democracy activists marched against Trump. They carried placards saying he was racist, sexist, fascist, fascist, homophobic, Islamophobic, and a disgrace to humanity. Ironically, they were calling out US imperialist, number one terrorist. Um, and who was that? That was LSD. Um, Longhair and Avery and those guys who 
I just mentioned um, report uh, we're protesting against Trump. Um, so they called out US imperialist number one terrorist, Echo Style, over and over again. One of them, Long Hair, um, one of them, Long Hair, actually went through court but was found not guilty um, for allegedly accepting and not declaring a donation, a, a, a donation from the newspapers from the newspapers owner, Jimmy Lai. Uh, based on voting uh, for the Legislative Council election, um, hey, um, conversations I have had here uh, in Hong Kong confirm. Um, that Hong Kongers want the West's or Western powers support to resist China. Totalitarian regimes fear America's value of freedom, one said. Dictatorships use nationalism. Dictatorships using nationalism are despicable. That was likely a reference to China. The Western media um, were full of reports uh, on the anniversary, on the 20th anniversary of the handover. The last time Hong Kong got such media attention was the umbrella protests almost three years ago. It seems Hong Kong's political situation gets paid attention to only, sorry, Hong Kong's political situation gets paid attention to by the Western press uh, for the set pieces only. Their reports will emphasize the colorful, performative, anti-China protests before and on the anniversary of the handover. But they are merely the visible tip of what is a Cold War iceberg. Those Western media reports um, will mention China's acculturation of Hong Kong, which Hong Kong people call mainlandization. Uh, their reports will reflect, but in a low-profile manner, the West's recent acceptance of Hong Kong nationalism as an element of the democracy movement. Um, but they, those reports wouldn't mention the points that I'm making here, and that's about this Cold War. Um, in, and now I've almost finished, but in the final paragraph of, of this uh, essay, it says, back to Feng's speech, photographs of what appears to have been a very formal event shows hundred, hundreds of PLA officers and soldiers in full uniform with gold tassels and insignia, sitting straight, looking expressionlessly dead ahead with their hands deliberately placed on their knees. Behind them, in the simplified Chinese character script, is an, which, is an unwelcome, um, which is unwelcome in Hong Kong, the, Chinese char the simplified character uh, script reflects uh, this idea that Hong Kong is being mainlandized. Um, behind those soldiers um, was a slogan in gold on a red background, the colors of China's national flag. And that slogan said, implement the great one country, two systems policy. Okay, that's the end of that, bye. Ginchogo 付費之後仲可以重溫所有精彩的節目